performer, Serena. Thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I want to take your picture. Aww. I love you all. I really, really do so much. Thank you for being here. All right, everybody say cheese. 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 Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Oh my, look how many. <laughs> Fabulous. I love you, love you, thank you. Love you. We love you. Now, actually, I'm, I'm going to give the floor to you because you, we, you and I were talking before, and this is something very special in your life that just happened, correct? With this uh, golden goddess, this thing. Okay, should I use yeah, this? Or? Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, this is. This is a book that's just been written, and it's got like everybody that's anybody that was in the classic movies, including me and Seika and Sharon Mitchell and. Candida Royale, Marilyn Chambers, Annie Sprinkle, Georgina Spelvin, um, everybody. We're, we're going to call it a, a who's who of past Queensland yeah, guests. It really is. <laughs> and it's really well written. Uh, it's not just skimpy interviews. It's like a big fat chapter on each one of us. Like, well, look at the size of that thing. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's over, obviously not a skippy over, interview. <laughs> over 900 pages and it's 300 wow. photographs. And anyway, I have a few with me. I'm almost sold out because I've been selling them like crazy. And come get them. Come see me. Can they get them from you if you run out of them? Will you give them contact info? Um, they can. They can order them from my Facebook page and also my site. But See. now is the only time you can get them signed. So get them from me now. I have like, I don't know, six left or something. Cool. See that? So. See how good we are at plugging those things? <laughs> it's, it's great. I really want people, if they're at all interested, this is the book to buy. So how did you get into this business? That's the opening question we always ask all our guests. Well, I think mostly just by posing. I was really into uh, posing. I, I posed first probably for Wii Magazine, which was o owned by Playboy at the time. And um, then it went to Hustler and Adam, and there were lots of men's magazines at that point. Oh yeah, that was a big industry back then. Exactly. Not so, so much I, anymore. I, but. Right. But then I posed for everybody. In fact, I remember in gallery one time I had the cover and the centerfold and a back layout as like three different people. <laughs> oh, that's seriously, great. seriously. When, when did you start the films? Uh, was, was it uh, the loop uh, scene over in California or New York? I was in California um, and eventually moved to New York. What happened with New York was I went for a week and I stayed two years because I met Jamie Gillis. <laughs> you know, I think it's funny. We uh, we've had several, you know, adult uh, performers here, and and no one has ever said a bad word about Jamie. Oh no, he was so charming. No. He was so charming. He would. It was like being in a Shakespearean play with him. <laughs> yeah, no one's ever said. Maybe we've had male, female performers, and, and everybody just seemed that we've had Jamie here. He, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't know he was so kinky and strange, but he could he could make you a charmer. By the way, yeah. We hear. I just think it's funny. I talked to some of the girls. They all told me to tell you, which I thought would be a, a, a just a, a, a I took it all as a compliment. But I talked to Seika a couple weeks ago and Sharon Mitchell. And they all said, "Ooh, Serena's gonna be there. Tell my favorite little hippie chick I said oh. hi." <laughs> I still have the hair under my arms. <laughs> so they, so they, they obviously all thought that's what they all said. Oh, tell my favorite little hippie chick. Well, I still am a hippie. <laughs> I know I laughed because I told people, I said we talk on email and 
I'd sign off and, 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 and you know, we'd send something back and forth and say, peace, Serena. <laughs> that, that's why it made me think of when they all said, tell my favorite now, to be chicken. Now that I know you better, I'm going to say peace, love, and happiness. There we that's go. That's how I usually oh. sign <laughs> Wind up my favorite hippie chick. How was, how, was, how was the whole New York film scene there when you were in it with that whole genre as far as you know the adults only stuff? Because it was just coming into, in, into like its, its mainstream exposure then when you started you know doing things. In New York, I was with Jamie and I lived with him, so we were like a couple and we were like the prince and princess of porn. So I had a great time and worked a lot because he would book us as a couple. Yeah. And so it worked out really well for me. I raised my prices and whatever. <laughs> he raised them for me. Did you ever do any, any of the, the, the like the showcases like Show World and the Melody Burlesque in any of those places? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's where. That's home away from home. <laughs> I went to New York to work at Show World yeah. for a week, and Jamie came to see me. And when I was in Show World, I was. I think it's all in here. It's going to be in my autobiography, if not, um, which is coming out soon. Um, I went to work for Show World with Joey Severa. Yeah. Joey. And um, we would fuck on stage. Yeah, the live sex shows were great. <laughs> in the basement. Um, live sex acts downstairs in the basement, me and Joey. It was so degrading and I loved it. <laughs> I did. It was like, I loved it. It was, it was wonderful. <laughs> Show World was three floors. It, it was like, yeah. uh, at Al Goldstein's words, a monument to the masturbatory arts. There was a bookstore on the street level. You went up, there was like, it cost you a buck to get in, and you got four tokens, and you'd find Show World tokens all over the city because people didn't want to bring them home. Because all they didn't know where they were. But there was like, there was, I think there was two live sex, there was a live peep going on. Yeah, yeah. And then the live, the, the theater was upstairs with all the good stuff going on. The live peep shows were up the second floor. Yeah. The first floor were like, like I saw my first donkey and a woman. <laughs> <laughs> a local borough show. <laughs> El burrito. Those were on the first floor, and then I was in the basement with Joey, and then. I ended up working there, you know, a few times, and Ron, who ran it, um, put me on the way third floor, and was like, way up these horrendous stairs, and I had to go, and he said, do whatever you want, do whatever you want, and I, he, they put me in this little tiny room, and I used to sit and read the Marquis de Sade book, and then people would come up and get beat, <laughs> and I would whip them <laughs> and read the Marquis de Sade. <laughs> they changed it up a little bit too. They made downstairs was all trannies, and then they moved the live stuff upstairs. <laughs> I saw Samantha Fox there with uh, Bobby Astor as her MC. Huh. Yeah. And I was also at the Melody Burlesque. Melody was a great place. I loved the Melody until they changed it up, like you say, when it was just dancing, yeah. and it would be like like a, a fight ring actually in the middle and everybody was sitting room. around you and um but then then i don't know what happened the management changed or something and the girls would have to go out and get felt up the mardi gras by everybody in yeah. the audience it was called the mardi gras it was awful because i'd get sick uh, from people's Dirty hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I don't need it started this. to get very unsanitary. Yeah, no, you, you never yeah. knew what night was going to be right, Mardi Gras. Yeah. You'd go over there to see burlesque, and all of a sudden these chicks are like roaming the audience, like rubbing against you and stuff yeah. for two bucks and things. It was yeah. really weird. That's not my. Yeah, when you know, I, yeah, I yeah, when you like know your partner, answer. it's one thing, and then yeah, yeah perfect strangers are completely. I, I just wanted to dance. I had my dance, and I always closed my eyes, and I'd like be orgasming and. Put on, on a stage. show. Yeah. Have a good time. Yeah. That was me, dancing. You did some classic stuff here, because I, I remember, I think one of your first movies was Massage, Parlor Wife. I think it was, actually. And you worked under the name Jen Gillian. Oh, that's really early, yeah. yeah. That was my name in uh, Wee Magazine, I remember. Well, one of my, my favorites, which was a lot of fun, which I just gave you a copy, was Teenage Cruisers. Oh, thank you, yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. How, how was, that was, I think you worked with John Holmes then. He's in that. Yeah. 
Um, I don't think we actually have a scene together, although we have worked with it. Um, I love Teenage Cruisers because it's such an oddball movie. <laughs> really a strange movie, but I love the guy that produced it. Johnny Legend. Johnny Legend. And he's like a real rockabilly yeah, guy. Yeah, he's still around. A lot, oh, a lot yeah. Of, I, we, oh, yeah. We've, we've known Johnny for years. Very cool. Everybody has a John Holmes story we had here, so you got to tell us a John Holmes story. <laughs> they always begin with, he was a very sweet man, but... <laughs> well, you know, he couldn't get a part on because if he did, he'd faint. So that's the, I mean, that's the obvious. Yeah. Um, was a very sweet man, but... <laughs> I knew that was coming. Sharon, Sharon Mitchell told a great story about how he gave her a gift one time and, you know, a bracelet, and he was like, well, thank you, you stole that from me four months ago, anyway. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. No, John was always completely a gentleman with me, and he always... The thing about working with John working with him is that he knew all the right angles to show off his penis and you. So he'd move you in the right direction for the cameras. And you didn't have to do anything, you just like, John would move you in the right position. Yeah, yeah. He was always professional, everybody said. You know, yeah. Well, when, when he finally got to the set. But um, <laughs> I never knew his drug taking at all. That really wasn't a part of me knowing John, but what I do remember about John is that every time I saw him, every time I worked with him, um, whether it was like at someone's house or on the set, he'd ask me to marry him. And I never knew, I, I think he might have been married at the time, I don't know. I know he was married a couple times, um, but he'd always ask me to marry him and I'd, it would be like, oh no, I'm already spoken for. <laughs> I think it was just one of those guys by the stories we've heard up here that just, you know, <laughs> fell in love with everybody he worked with, too, you know. But, but a, a true romantic heart, I think, what you well, can call John Holmes. <laughs> I used to fall in love with everybody I'd fuck, except on the set, so that would be like my out. Yeah, I could work. I could work with someone and just have fun and recreation, whatever, and sex, and not fall in love because I was working. <laughs> Which was nice. I liked that. Yeah. Well, when when you were when you working in adult film too, you made the the crossover from you know shot on film to shot on video, and did some video productions too. And uh, what, what what was the major difference between those? Was you know was it the setups all longer on the films, or you know did they just rush through a video production faster? I want to say I mostly worked on film because I don't really remember much video. Yeah, there were a couple of them later, but yeah, you yeah, were. You, you know, that's what we always we always like to say. We we, I, we always like the adult stars that worked on film here. But, okay. I remember starting out in eight millimeter loops, and then it became very exciting when I worked on sixteen millimeter. And then when I graduated to 35 millimeter, I was like really shooting movies. Yeah, well, the, those they were, were those days, real, per, nice big productions those too? Those days, they were like real movies with plots and storylines and you know. Well, you, 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 you were in the, the classic Insatiable, and what people today don't realize was when the Insatiable premiered in New York and California, it was an event. It's like I never waited in a line for a movie before to Insatiable because oh. you couldn't get in the first showing. It was wow. like the red carpet whole deal. I think Marilyn showed up for the first showing and it was a line around the block. Wow. And you know, these were the events when these things opened up. They were, you know, big theatrical premieres, not like, you know, today four hours of crap on video, here's well, three dollars. It's, it's all the it's all that era but when they kicked down the door and it was no longer yeah. you know, C D basement eight mil productions, it was people went to the theater to watch them. They even promoted it as, you know, couples films and things like that. Yeah, that's true. You, you did a lot of like Wolf Beach stuff, like Abduction of Lorelei, and then I've seen a couple. No, actually, I, I specialize in loops, so I've seen a lot of really interesting loops with you in them. Yeah. <laughs> Pregnant bondage loop. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you, I think you. I pissed all over in New York one time. Yeah, I think I might have slipped in that. <laughs> 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 back, back to Insatiable. I was actually in France, and um, I had my baby with me and her nanny, 
and we were in France, and my child got bubblegum in her hair, and it was awful, and I couldn't get it out. And so I took a bubble bath with her and proceeded to chop the bubble gum out of her hair and chop my hair to show her that it didn't yeah. hurt. And I chopped her hair and I chopped my hair and I chopped... Anyway, I ended up with this really cute short haircut that you'll see in Insatiable. And I got the necklace that I wear in Insatiable with 92 diamonds on it from somebody that I met in France. And then I got the call to come back and I took a red eye to New York, and then I got to California, and they actually got me on a helicopter and took me to the set, and I guess the helicopter's actually in the scene, because um, they wanted to get me to the set so fast. Sure, that's called stealing the scene. Hey, we got it here, let's use it. <laughs> yeah, right. So we had this really hot, hot tub scene with Marilyn, and Actually, Marilyn was hotter than you probably know because she did things to me that ended up on the editing floor because they couldn't show them because it was illegal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> At that time. So I think, I think fisting is probably more well known now, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> certain circles. <laughs> in, those, in those days it wasn't done very often. <laughs> but Marilyn and I and she used to work at the Mitchell Brothers Theater right. and so did I and she was their big star. And so she'd work on one stage and I'd work on the other and we'd see each other alive. Do you remember shooting loops for diverse industries? Diverse. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Yeah. They were I, I, in the valley. Yeah, and they did a lot of like real psychedelic stuff, real classy fade-ins and fade-out and stuff. I had all that stuff and it turned red and I couldn't save it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ask me and Ken about color fades. We're experts about oh. this point. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to, it, 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 I, if I had money, I could have done something, but it was cost prohibitive to do it. But a lot of stuff yeah. was in there with you and you just, wow, you just lit up the screen or my wall or whatever I was shooting it on. <laughs> great, I mean, it was great stuff, man. Was, yeah. What were you shooting on? The wall. <laughs> oh, I stepped in that one, okay. I, did. I smoked too much weed, sorry. <laughs> You just gotta, you just gotta watch what you say when you're doing the adult star panel. No shit. <laughs> I avoided coming down the back hallway and doing the let's do the go through the back door joke that I usually make with people because we. Oh. we you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was really great stuff though. It's a shame I couldn't save because I think they had high production values in that. I think I think yeah, you were the in one of those, so. especially for Probably. loops. Yeah. yeah, loops didn't usually have high production values. Toward, toward the end, they did though. They really had to, you know, they had to spice it up with it in the motel room, you know, whatever. So they, 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 you know, it was an offshoot, which you know, pretty much we know, segued into 16 millimeter stuff. Well, I did stuff. a lot of Swedish erotica. <coughs> yeah, that's what that was a classier one too. They were loops, and um, I hated those people. I hated them. But what about <laughs> the scarves? The scarves. They make you wear these stupid kerchiefs. I hated them. I hated it. <laughs> I had no idea how much, but it was like their It was their thing, thing right? Yeah. right? And that was their trademark, and I never kind of got that till later. It's like, oh yeah, they had a trademark, but <clears throat> I hated wearing those stupid scarves. But anyone who worked for Swedish Erotica usually bitches that they wanted them back. The scarves. scarves, yeah, they were like, they were so cheap, they wanted the scarves back. Oh no, they never gave them to you. Yeah. Seika saved them though. Seika said she used to just take them because they were always filthy. She was like, if I take them, it will force them to buy new ones. <laughs> last time she was here, and then, and then she was like, I found them, so now I actually get really good money for them. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's Actually, you know, a lot, a lot of the stuff you were in was the high, high end, thirty-five millimeter productions, like yeah. the Phantasm Comes Again, Ecstasy Girls, Eight Hundred Fantasy Lane, all, all, you know, pretty much classic, classically yeah. regarded stuff. Well, so, that was Phantasm Comes Again was a big. It was like a crossover because that was more like a softcore. They were, you know, crossing over to a Main weird, Street. Yeah, yeah, that was a weird. Movie. Well, yeah, a real fan. Yeah, kind of a weird fan. Has anyone ever seen that one? Phantasm Comes Again. 
it's a weird kind of fantasy film, but they yeah, was trying to be a crossover. Anyway. <laughs> well, your memories of New York Babes, because that was a who's who cast, too. Yeah. Vanessa Del yeah. Rio, yourself, I think Gloria Leonard. Yeah. Gloria uh, was running High Society at the time. Yeah, she was and the editor. Exactly, and she was very good. She should have been the New York mayor. She was that, oh, really? Oh, yeah. She was that smart and that hip and that. She was a feminist and she was a great lady. Yeah. yeah. You ever have any uh, running with Al Goldstein with Screw? Any interviews with that? Or? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing you want to talk about? <laughs> Autobiography, which okay. is going to be out in the next six months. <laughs> oh, no, no, no spoiler. <laughs> it, will, it will entice us to purchase the novel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, people are so hot. People, people are so hot and cold with Al, though. We, you know, some people just adored him for who he was, and some people just hmm, thought he was a pig. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's a 50-50 split, dear. We, we, you know, we, we, you know, we're not talking ill of him because he recently passed. We're talking ill of him because he deserved it. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you. Oh, thank you. Yay. Only because it's you. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> How do I put this? I've always considered myself first to be an actress and that I got paid as an actress and then I would have sex in my film roles, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I never was a prostitute or a street no, walker we, or and we a would, call we, girl yeah, or We never thought, we, no one here like ever that. thought of adult actresses like that either, right? I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Al Goldstein is the only one I've ever charged. <laughs> because he was such a pig. Yeah. <laughs> he probably bitched about it the whole time. No, he paid right up. Yeah. <laughs> Bravo. Sorry. Don't forget, I was making a shitload of money off that phone sex deal he had. Uh -huh. That's why he could afford to like fuck with everybody and get sued and shit because it, literally the money was pouring in because it was like three dollars a minute to talk to some. What you thought was sexy was probably some 60-year-old woman who was just reciting a script or something. But yeah, it was coming in big time. When it didn't come in and he kept fucking around, that's when he got in trouble and lost all his stuff. I was his own unique individual, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been right at home here, too. Oh, yeah, he would have yeah. been right at home here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I'm speechless, Pete. Curious, curious to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got like a list of people you were. We always spoke about Jamie and uh, John Holmes. Uh, feelings on Seika? Seika was, is, um, keen and beautiful and like perfect. She was always the platinum goddess. How about Annette Haven? <laughs> I know what it's going to look like that, because everybody I bring up in that haven, yeah. Sorry. Okay, no problem. To me, she, well. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another Al Goldstein story. Right. <laughs> uh, Vanessa Del Rey. She was fun. She was fun. Real New York. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Um, no, but she, she was hot. She was a hot mama. I, I did a show with her before I left New York. It yeah. was like, she was fun. yeah, she was great. She yeah. doesn't care. I mean, she called me up and she goes, "Well, how do you want to work this?" I said, "Well, I usually think of stuff on the way over." She goes, "I want to make this as filthy as possible. Make talk about blowing cab drivers." <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. She was great. Yeah. And she, she went. She went for an hour and a half nonstop and didn't hold anything back. She, was, she doesn't yeah. care. She well, just. Yeah. She's just. Like, her back. She got back injury. Now she was. You know, we booked her well, here. Well, carrying those boobs. Yeah, right? that's true. We booked her. We booked her here. And she backed out because she didn't want to fly because her back, you know, sitting Aww. in the plane seat. But you know, I met Vanessa a couple times myself, and I, I, you know, I adored her because she really was. She just She's said what she very wanted. Real. Yeah, she, yeah, she doesn't yeah. get more down to earth than Vanessa. Yeah. No. How about Georgina Spelman? Oh, she's a lady. She's, oh, she's, she's the grand dam. Definitely. Here's she's a, she's another one who has back problems. Yeah. That, 
We, I couldn't get out. We couldn't yeah, get her out here. Yeah, I can hardly get her out of her house anymore. Yeah. Desiree, oh, I, Desiree, Desiree, I remember Desiree Costo. I think you worked well, with sure. her. Well, sure. I'm sure I was in, inside Desiree Costo. That's actually one of my bigger movies. <laughs> Although it's her movie, but I'm like the second star. Um, <laughs> We're selling Blond, the book. Blondes have a reputation for being dumb. No. Well, that's Hollywood. It's responsible for that, to be honest with it's you. It's a stereotype. Honestly, it's a stereotype. That's, my that's what I'm saying about Desiree. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't blonde. You didn't she get it. Died. Blonde. Yeah, I Ain't did blonde. get it. I, get, I guess I had to think about it. <laughs> I do. And I haven't slapped on a Desiree Cousteau uh, movie in a while, so I, you know. It, kinda, it was like... <laughs> 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 about a quick talk. How about John Leslie? Oh man, he had the hottest butt. <laughs> he could pump and pump and pump. You just want to grab his cheeks. Oh yes. We had some very hot sex. Very hot sex. And he, he was a good musician too. <laughs> you got any, you know, let's open it up to you guys. You guys got any questions? Yeah, who's got the ultra flesh uh, question? Somebody's got to ask about that. We had love me. Go ahead. Uh, uh, just for the record, um, I'm, I think I met Vanessa Del Rio in 1997. Well, she was in Cleveland a couple of years that, during that time. She was a very nice lady. This is before her website ever came through, ever came about. That's, and, uh, and I got her autobiography book. It was pretty much a limited edition from Kishan. <laughs> And besides, um, despite what people say, it's just that I think porn stars are people too. Well, thank you. So do all of us. <laughs> His quote was, "Porn stars are people too." Yeah, that's right. And I'm being Hi, nice about it, and I'm very nice about it too. That's what, yes, you are. Well, that's why we're here. That's why we invite them. That's why they come in and we show them respect because they are people too. Thank you. Thank you for grounding us in, as human beings. I'm sorry, but if you don't mind, I'm a goddess. Yeah. 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 That, that's, that's right. Yeah, but it says it on the cover. And, and you have to, if it's written down, you have to believe it. There you go. Just like the Bible. And like I, I'll say it. I, I said this before. I'll say. I'll say it again. You know, the saving grace back then was people like Serena could actually act yeah. as well as you know do the sex thing. So yeah. that's what made. That's what made. You know, everybody says, "Well, how come you're down on today's product?" Because it sucks. Because back when all this was going on, it was new and different, and. All these films had plot lines to them. We could actually follow the stuff. Now it's just, you know, in and out, repeat if necessary. Well, it seems like we've gone from trying to make a film that'll attract couples and adults to loops again. That's what's coming yeah. down to. You know, yeah. honestly, yeah. they might be shot on video, they might come up, but it just loops again. It's just a loop collection. And, I mean, that's fine, especially if you don't want to sit through the boring parts, but, you know, <laughs> that's not what it was. You know, that's not what it evolved into from the original, you know, from the loops to the, and the 60s and 70s. I could act is because I actually was trained as an actress as a child. Yeah, I did some people. I was yeah. in the uh, yeah. Wendell Center Theater. Wendell? Okay, I've heard that, of that. Yeah. That's a big theater yeah. in Hi. the area. Well, we'll open up. Does anyone have a question? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Hi, Hi, honey. Um, so you alluded to feminism in your talk. This is my usual question for okay. um, the women who were working at the heat of the feminist sort of movement during the 70s. Uh -huh. um, how, what was your stance considering how um, most of mainstream feminists were absolutely anti-pornography, very, I know. like... You need to read the book okay. because <laughs> you know who was really the best talking about that is Gloria Leonard yeah. and she was like a yeah. super feminist yeah. and she would lecture to feminists and tell them really what was happening. As far as my concern, I was a feminist um, in, that I, in that I created my own artwork and stuff and my films were my artwork at the time. I was just happened to use my body as my media, kind of. 
and then I used oil paint, and then I used sculpture, and then I used something else. Now I've been writing poetry, and you know. Um, as far as the, the feminist stance about pornography, I always think that pornography is a good thing um, for couples and for, for women in general. Um, it is it is healthy, and I, do, I think there are far less rapists and all that horrible stuff because of pornography. And they're they're saying the opposite, but of my stance is the opposite of theirs. Um, I guess it, did you feel like isolated or angry at all that the feminist movement did not include, you, you know, or, or sort of had that rejection, or it, it didn't bother you. It didn't really bother me because I was always um, a second-class citizen because I was a pornographic actress, mm -hmm. which I had a lot of years to try to get over that and yeah. become my own person because of that kind of rejection from society. But now I just, I look at Lady Gaga and I say, ha. <laughs> 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 I mean, there was a big stigma. You know, the guys that could have, you know, made this happen, you know, with more less restrictions would be the customers, but the, the average customer didn't want anybody to know he bought the damn thing. That was another problem because, though, you know, the average customer was a timid guy who didn't want him to know that I had the brown paper bag, where me, I'd walk in and just walk out of the damn thing, you know? No, <laughs> everybody was sneaking around. Yeah. Well, even today, if you look at, to be honest with you, you look at, like, who's the biggest, you know, uh, order of mail order porn, it's southern states, conservative states. The, the, the biggest consumer of porn ever is Utah, the Mormon state. <laughs> <laughs> the statistics are there, you can go on, you can just go find them on the, and, it, and it's like, the, the hypocrisy is still there. Yes, and, th and that's what really, it, to me, pissed me off about the people who were outraged about it. You know, it's like, today, politicians who hate gays are usually having gay sex. Just because they're all Republicans doesn't mean anything. It just means that they're the most hypocritical group, you know? So the hypocrisy is what always bothered me about it. And, and, and we just lost one of the biggest mouths going, the Reverend Freddie Phelps. Oh, May he burn yeah. in hell. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm I proud everybody to say I was one of the guys that sent him a medium flat rate postage box full of dog shit from my own backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Address on it, yeah. Well, people ask me what do they? Well, hey, what about that? And I'm like, obviously, God hates Freds. <laughs> <laughs> he used to hold them God hates fag signs, and I'm like, well, God hates Freds. You another question? Oh yeah. Um, you know, according to what I read about, um, looked at um, history, um, the porn history. Um, when they do it for the rebellion, what's the difference between doing for rebellion and money? Because nowadays, it's mostly for, most about money, but Back in those times, they say they do it mostly for rebellious statements. Did you, you didn't really do it out of rebellion. Did you know any performers who did? Sharon. Sharon. Yeah, well, I, was, well, I didn't want to bring her up. I was waiting for you to go, because she, I came out and admitted it. But so we, yeah, now she talks about it in here. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so there were those people, is what you're saying. I, I was brought up Catholic, so there was definitely a rebellious part of me that. Yeah, I wanted to do it. Um, but like I said, I grew up in the theater training, so that played a part, and I don't know. Um, <laughs> it just worked out that way, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what are you going to say? At least you're not, you know, you, you can't be embarrassed about your past. You learn to live with it, you, you know, and the, and the negative, you know, attitudes, they've all changed. Now you're sitting here and, and people are like, wow, I'm really interested in what you say. I do, I do want to buy the book, you know. It's just funny how attitudes changed and, you know, uh, but all of us here are probably a, a little more left-leaning, a little more liberal, and we're still, you know, talked down to by, you know, the, the, the vocal minority will always call us, you know, that passive majority, you know, names. And, yeah, what the hell. Yeah, I still get they shit for releasing stuff, what the hell. Yeah. How, how dare you release that? Why? Yeah, they got to live with themselves. We go to bed and sleep easy. So. <laughs> Does anyone else have a, a question? Anyone else? Nobody? No? Oh, go ahead. Shana? Who is your favorite uh, actor or actress to work with? 
You know who I really loved was Leslie Beauvais. She was beautiful. <laughs> she was really sweet. I liked her a lot. We we toured a little bit, stage show, um, and did a lot of scenes in, in movies. Um, I liked her so much. I guess John knew so it really was a hot fuck. I liked him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I lived with Jamie. And Jamie taught me really about S and M. Um, because we would change roles. And we would change roles like midstream when we were but we'd always be playing. We'd never hurt each other and it it would be fun. And we never we you know I don't know if we, we never like had a safe word or anything. We just know each other so well and be like, you know, enough's enough. And yeah, right, exactly. So I guess Jamie probably would, overall would be my favorite because he taught me things at home <laughs> that you couldn't see on the screen that was was too hot to handle. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else before we as we wrap as we wound up? Go ahead, Don. Just curious. I know you were in the era of film and its graduation into the big theaters, and wondering if you have any good stories about maybe some of the promotionals and maybe oh, police raids about or the what? I'm sorry. Promos or, or premieres? Any good stories about the big, big premieres of the you know the shot on film era? Uh, not of any premieres. I'm sorry, nothing comes to mind. <laughs> um, I did love being in movie theaters, though. Seeing myself. Especially in the grand cute. big theaters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the big velvety seats and the balconies. Right. <laughs> and you, really large on the screen. Yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Anyone else? Come on, don't be shy. All right, Pete, you got anything to wrap things up? All I can say it was great finally getting you out here because you know you're you're a true legend. You know. Thanks for being here. Thanks for everything for what you've done for the business. Yeah, Serena, any last words to the to your to your I don't know hundred. 20 fans or so sitting in the room? I just, everybody come back, get my card, Facebook friend me, please, because. Buy a photo, she's cheaper than hell. Don't be a cheapskate. Pull a $10 <laughs> bill out of your pocket, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> she's got grandkids, for Christ's sake. She's, Christmas is coming. Christmas <laughs> <laughs> We, we call that our, our guest retirement fund. Please go buy a phone. I just want you to know that really my fans, and I don't want to start crying. She's a little verklempt. <laughs> it's the Bette Midler song. All the wings swinging? Oh, good Lord. You really are my fans that keep me up in the air and Keep me happy every day. It's just nice Thank to know you. that after all these years and all the shit that, you know, because you were a ground floor, it's just nice to know that it's, it's accepted. You know, you don't, there's no struggle anymore. You, you know, isn't it nice? Isn't it it really is. really nice to know that I there's fans. I have a happy life and I'm thankful for that, but I'm really thankful for my fans. Thank you so much for being there. Very cool. Thank you. True Thank you very much. You guys are the greatest fans ever.